I wanted to tell you a story about my youngest son, Noah, and I did get his permission. When you're a preacher, you got to get their permission before you share stories about your kids. But my, my youngest is seven years old, and when he grows up, he wants to be a movie star, okay? Now, just that's, that's for context. In, in fact, so much so that he told his, his grandfather, my, my dad, he told him the other day that when he grows up and he's a famous movie star, he's going to have a private jet. And of course, my dad asked him if he could ride in the private jet. And Noah said, and I quote, no, that's for me and my movie star buddies. Okay. <laughs> so just, just so you know where he's coming from. Um, I'm glad he's keeping his feet on the ground, you know, but... Um, but he, he asked me, we were driving to Bible class Wednesday night, and he asked me, he said, Dad, listen. He said, I don't know if he said listen or not, but he said, Dad. He said, uh, what happens if a director tells me that I have to say a bad word in a movie? And I thought, well, that's a really good question. I didn't know he was thinking about that kind of stuff. So he said, uh, and I'm sure he doesn't know any bad words. He's homeschooled, so he doesn't know any of those. But... Um, <laughs> But he knows they exist, right? So, uh, but, but he said, what happens if they tell me that I, that I have to say a bad word? And I said, well, what, what do you think you should do in a situation like that? He said, well, I could ask the director to change the script. I said, yeah, that's really good. Good, good answer. And, and I thought that was going to be the end of the conversation. But he said, he said what, what, if, what if he doesn't? What if he says no? And I said, well, that's a good question. You're going to have to make a choice. So we had this long conversation about, you know, every one of us has to make a choice. Do we, do we choose the things that other people want us to do or do we choose the things God wants us to do? And so I told him, I said, but you've got to choose. You're going to have that situation and situations like that all through your life where you have to choose. Do you do what someone wants you to do or do you do what you, you know the Lord wants you to do, what God wants you to do? And, and I... Gave him this whole long sermon. And then, and then I, I said, what, what are you thinking? And he was real quiet. I said, what are you thinking? He said, I'm thinking, don't rush me. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I, said, I said, no rush. You don't have to decide right now. I said, I said you can think about this the rest of your life because you're going to have lots of chances where you're going to have to think about this. And I, I thought the conversation was done. Probably 20 minutes, half an hour goes by. We drove up here to the building. I was getting my class ready for Wednesday night. He was standing with me, and we were standing in front of a whiteboard, and I was busy trying to get everything ready, and he said, Dad, I made my decision. I was like, okay. I didn't know what he decided. He pulled the, the cap off of a marker, of a dry erase marker, and he wrote on the board, G-O-D. I thought, that's great. That's what he decided. He decided, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. You know, and, and, I, and I got to thinking about that. And how very wise that is, how important that is, that all of us spend time thinking about our decisions. Spend time thinking about the choices that we have made in the past, choices that we're, we're making right now, the path and the road we're on right now, and choices and decisions that we will make in the future. What will we do when someone asks us to do this? What will we do when we come to this sort of a fork in the road? What sort of a choice will we make? We have to spend time. We have to slow down. We have to call a time out and just spend some time thinking, processing, meditating, on the choices that we have made, the choices that we are making, and the choices that we will make. So this morning, as we kind of wrap up this series on not-so-common sense, on wisdom, and on Proverbs, I want to look at four additional Proverbs with you. So if you got your Bible, let's look at four Proverbs from Proverbs chapter 14, four verses from this one chapter, and think about this this morning. Verse 8 says this, the wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way, but the folly of fools is deceiving. And that might be kind of a challenging proverb to kind of think about what does that mean. Uh, who, who is being deceived? The folly of fools is deceiving. Who, who does a fool's folly deceive? Well, look at the first part of that verse. 
The wisdom of the prudent is to discern whose way? His way. The, the prudent can discern their own way, can discern whether or not their way is, is right, is good. If they're doing something that's wise, if the path they're on is the path they should be on, if the way they're going is the way they should be going. But the folly of fools is deceiving. If, if the prudent can discern their own way, then whose way can the fool not discern? His own. A fool's folly deceives himself. A fool is self-deceived. He's tricked himself, or rather his folly has deceived him. He thinks he's doing what's right, or he thinks he, he's doing what's good, or he just isn't really thinking about it at all, but he is self-deceived. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever deceived yourself? And if your answer is no, then you're doing it right now. <laughs> Isn't that right? We've all deceived ourselves at one time or another. We've all acted foolishly. And we've tricked ourselves into thinking that what we're doing is just, maybe we haven't tricked ourselves into believing that it's right, but maybe we've tricked ourselves into believing it's not wrong. Maybe we've tricked ourselves into believing this is what everybody does. Maybe we've tricked ourselves into believing this was the only choice we could have possibly made. But at one point or another in our life, we have deceived ourselves into thinking this is the way that we should go. The wisdom of the prudent is to discern his way. And so are we, are we spending time? That's my one question for you this morning. That's what my one question for me this morning. That's my one question for us as a group of people. Have we stopped to discern our way and say, is the way that I have been going and the way that I'm going right now and the way that I'm planning to go in the future, is it the wise way? Is it the good way? Is it the way that I'm supposed to be going? Because... It's very possible that the right way isn't evident. The right way isn't always obvious, even to yourself. Let's look at another verse, Proverbs 14 and verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Here's a very simple thought here. Every way has an end, right? Every way has an end. Every path leads somewhere. Every path leads somewhere. The, the prudent, as we just read in the previous verse, the prudent can discern the way he's on. So he kind of sees where it is that this path is leading. What the end of this path is. Every path has a destination. Every path has an end. Every way is headed somewhere. The wise look ahead and say, is that somewhere a somewhere I want to go? Is the end a place I want to end up? Because our feelings and not just our feelings. So sometimes feelings get a bad rap. God gave you your feelings just like he gave you your thoughts. Thoughts and feelings are good and they have their place, but they're horrible moral compasses. And we've said that time and time again. Because our thoughts, our logic, our reasoning, our feeling, they're subjective, aren't they? And they're biased. And we can be on a path and we can say, this path feels right. It feels good. This feels like the way I should go. I'm reminded of many times I've been driving down the road and I thought that road seemed like the right way. And my wife kept telling me, you're the, going the wrong way. You know, but it can feel, it can feel right. And it'd be dead wrong. Every path leads somewhere. Our, our challenge our job is to look ahead and say, where is this path headed? Where am I 
going? What's the end of this way? Because the, the way to death seems right in our own eyes. No one ever intends, no one ever intends to be on the road to hell. No one ever intends that. No one ever intends to be on the road to destruction and suffering and punishment. Nobody ever intends that. They just aren't looking ahead to say, is this path I'm on headed in that direction? And in a room this size with this many people gathered here, chances are there are a lot of us that are making choices right now that are headed in that direction. The path you're on has an end. The way you're going has a destination. And you've got to stop and, and do more than simply say, does it feel right? Does it feel good? Does it feel like this is the way I should be going? Proverbs 14 and verse 15. Verse 15, the simple believes everything but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Now, obviously, we know this, don't we know that you can't believe everything people tell you, right? You can't believe everything you tell. If you've been online, you know that, right? You know that you can't believe everything you read, you can't believe everything you see, you can't believe everything you hear, you can't believe everything that people tell you. Simple people, foolish people, believe everything that people say to them. They just swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. But the prudent, I mean, look at what it says. It, it not only says that the prudent doesn't do that, that's the implication, but the prudent gives thoughts to his, what, church? His steps. You can't, you can't go along with everything you hear. You can't go along with everything everybody tells you. You can't go along with everything your friends or the media or your political party or your neighbors or your family even. You can't go along with everything. You've got to give, here's the, man, this is a key word for this morning's lesson. You have to give what? Thought. Give thought. Are, are, we, are we doing that? I mean, we live, we live in a fast-paced culture, don't we? Where every second, we try to schedule something every second. If something isn't scheduled, we find something to listen to, or we find something to watch, or we find some place to go, or we find something to do, and every moment there's noise. And sometimes there's not time to think. There's not space to think. There's not opportunity to think. There's not margin in our life to stop and give thought to our steps. Give thought to our steps in the past, give thought to our steps in the present, give thought to where our steps are taking us. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you headed? The things that you did this week, are, are, they, are they leading you where you want to go? How much time did you spend thinking about it? If you know, if you know that it's very easy to fool yourself, if you know that the right way isn't always obvious, if you know that it's very easy and you have a history of it, and so do I, of being self-deceived, if you know that, then you have to be intentional about slowing down and giving thought to your steps and saying, is this wise? Is this wise? And we always ask, and it's a good question, is this wrong? And that's a good question, is this wrong? But there are other questions we need to ask as well. And one of those is, is this wise? We'll talk more about that in a second. Let's look at another verse. Proverbs 14 and verse 16. Proverbs 14 and verse 16. It says this, one who is wise is, what's the word? Cautious. One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. That word cautious there in the Hebrew, apparently, it has to do with being afraid. Being afraid. 
There, there's a time when you should be afraid. There's been a time or two as a parent, I want my kids to be a little bit more afraid than they are, right? What are you doing? Don't get up there. No, that's not safe. You should be scared and you're not. Why am I the only one scared here? You should be a little more scared. There are some things that should scare you. And going the wrong way in life, you should be a little bit afraid of that. You should be a little bit afraid that you, you're deceiving yourself. You should be a little bit afraid that you're making the wrong sort of choices in your life. You should be afraid of going in the wrong direction and ending up in the wrong place and hurting people in your life and rebelling against God. So afraid that, you, that you're willing to say, you know what, I, I don't want to do anything that, that might go that direction and, and turn away from that which is evil. See, because foolish people are reckless and careless. Careful, careless. And careless people just rush in and they just, they just do what seems natural and what seems like a good idea. I mean, every single bad idea seemed like a good idea at the time, right? Every single time. We just, just do what seems good and seems right and seems natural, seems logical, seems like common sense. But we ought to, we ought to be a little afraid of going in the wrong direction. So, so as I thought about these four passages, I, I thought of four things, and see if you agree with me, that these four things are kind of takeaways that we, can, we all need in our life if we're going to be wise. Here are four things. Number one, next slide. Four things that we need in our, our life if we're going to be wise. Number one is this, is time. Time. You, you've, got to, you've got to make sure that you have some margin and some opportunity in your life. We can't spend all of our time going and doing and listening and watching. We've got to create time to be wise. And second, goes right along with that, is thought. We've got to spend time thinking. Thinking. I, I'm afraid we've kind of written this off as just sort of a personality thing. There's just some people that are more introspective than others. And that may be true. But all of us, all of us need to be introspective. We all need to spend some time thinking. Just, just stop. Just turn off the radio. Turn off the television, turn off Netflix, turn off the computer, turn off social media, just take a, a coffee break and just spend 10 minutes every day, however much time it is, and just ask yourself some questions. Like, are the things I'm doing wise? Again, there's been more than once you fooled yourself into thinking that something you're doing isn't wrong, right? I mean, we can justify all kinds of things. We can justify all kinds of things, and we say, well, is it wrong? Well, you know, in my situation, I don't think this is wrong, you know, because there's this and there's that, and we just, we kind of reason through it, and it doesn't seem wrong, but you probably haven't yet fooled yourself about whether or not it's wise. And if you really were to ask yourself that question, and just stop and think about it, because some of us are looking at things and engaging in things, drinking things, taking things, going places that we know, we know that it's not wise. We know that at the very least, this is headed in a direction that's going to hurt people and hurt ourselves. We can ask ourselves questions like, is it wise? Or we can get even more specific. Is it loving? How about that? Is it loving? Is it patient? Is it kind? Is it self-controlled? Is it godly? Is it good? Is it gentle? Is it faithful? To God? To your spouse? To your children? Is this something that's helpful? Is it beneficial? Am I helping or am I harming? But if we just go through life so fast-paced where we're always watching something and always listening to something and always working or always playing, and we, we say we work hard, we play hard, that's fine, but do you think hard? Do, do you take time to just think about your actions? 
Because church, I've seen it too many times and so have you. I've experienced it personally so many times and I've experienced it vicariously through other people too many times where we get a mile down the road before we ever stop to think, how did I get here? How did I get here? How did I end up in this situation? And we stop and we realize, where, where am I? My marriage is in shambles. My relationship with my kids isn't what I want it to be. I, I don't know how I, I got engaged in this behavior. Or this, I don't even know how I got here. We're all going to have moments like that, and we've all had moments like that, but we'll get a whole lot less further down the road if we'll stop and just ask ourselves some good questions. Is this wise? Is this loving? How about this? What might be the unintended consequences of this? What if we were to just, just ask ourselves that, just honestly ask ourselves, what might be the unintended consequences of what I'm doing right now. Some of us need to wrestle with that thought because if your spouse or your kids or your boss, if they knew, imagine how it would hurt them. But it would be better for them to know now, right now, than for you to keep going down this road and keep hurting them and keep distancing yourself from them. But we haven't stopped to ask ourselves those important questions. What might be the unintended consequences if I keep going down this road? What might be the unintended consequences if I keep hiding this from my wife, from my kids, from my boss, from the church? What might be the unintended consequences to me to them, to my relationship with God. Stop, create time in your life, margin, opportunity in your life to think. And then number three, truth, truth. We need objective truth in our life, don't we? It's so easy to fool ourselves. If we know that, if we know that it's so easy to fool ourselves and to think something's right when it's really wrong, to think something's wise when it's really foolish, to think something is helpful when it's really harmful, then we need someone other than us to speak truth into our life. We need the Spirit of God. We need the Scriptures. We need the people of God to come into our life and tell us things that hurt sometimes. Tell us things that we don't want to hear sometimes. Tell us things that we... I always love this. I always love when somebody says to me, I disagree with what you said this morning, Wes. And I think, well, when I first heard it, I disagreed too, you know, or I still disagree with it, but it doesn't change the fact that it's true. It's true. If it's true, then we need to listen. It's so easy to believe what's false. We need objective truth in our life. And finally, number four, humility. We need to be able to accept when we're wrong and stop before we go any further and change. I want to end with Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. I know we only have a second, but Titus 3, 3 through 7. Paul writes this, For we ourselves were once, what, church? Foolish. We were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice, and envy, hated by others, and hating one another. But, but is one of the greatest words in the New Testament. But, this is who we were. But, when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, what happened? He saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That, that church is the gospel. Not just that we are forgiven fools, because that's what we are. We're forgiven fools, aren't we? But we're also recovering fools. That, that's what the church is, is home to and home for, is recovering fools. 
And that, that's what we need to be intentional. Intentional. Not just in seeking the forgiveness of God, but in allowing him to actually change us. So that we can say with Paul, we once were foolish and disobedient, slaves to various passions, but now things are starting to change. We're starting to see things that we didn't see before and understand things we didn't understand before because the truth of God, the spirit of God is working on us and we're a work in progress for sure, but we're getting better. Let, let's, let's begin the process of recovery, of beginning to recover from our foolishness. But in order to do that, we, we've got to do those things. We've got, to, we've got to make sure that we create opportunities in our life. And that's what this should be. And that's what Bible classes should be. And that's what life groups should be. And that's what you should create in your individual life, in your family life, is time to stop and think. Ask yourself good questions. Examine yourself. Allow the truth of God's word to speak into your life. Read scripture. Apply it to your life. And have the humility to say, you know what? I've been a fool. And I want to change. Church, I say this every week, but I mean it from the very bottom of my heart with every fiber of my being. We are in this together. You've been a fool, so have I. Join the club. We've all been fools. That's what we're doing here. We once were foolish. But, but we not only want to be forgiven fools, we want to be recovering fools. We want to start to be a little wiser in our life. So let us help each other. Lean on us. Let us lean on you. Tell us what's going on in your life. I know it's hard, but it'd be a whole lot easier to deal with it now than to keep going down that road and for the situation to get even worse. Please let us pray with you. Our shepherds after, after service, they would love to pray with you in the prayer room or right now as a church family. Let us pray with you. Or maybe you're not a Christian and you're ready to become a Christian. Let us help you this morning as together we stand and sing this song.